Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kathy Alm. I am the CEO of the Professional Association of Therapeutic Horsemanship International. <laughs> um, just very briefly, uh, for anyone that uh, is not familiar with PATH International, we were founded in 1969. No, I'm not going to give you the whole history. We were founded in 1969 in order to uh, provi help provide safe and effective equine-assisted services. We um, accredit organizations. We credential individual providers that provide these services. And we um, also have a membership base because we work to move the entire industry forward with a variety of uh, initiatives. And that's what I'm going to actually talk to you about in the next nine and a half minutes. One of those initiatives that is our um, current uh, data collection uh, initiative. We have partnered with the Temple Grandin Equine Center uh, on an assessment protocol initiative. Um, the, uh, essentially, this both was one of our strategic, what, one of PATH International's strategic goals. And uh, Temple Grandin Equine Center, or um, <coughs> excuse me, TGEC, happened to come to us and say, is there a particular protocol for um, assessing and collecting outcomes data um, on equine assisted services? And um, we said, no, but it's something we wanted to work on. And so we uh, partnered with uh, Temple Grandin Equine Center um, and decided that we, we wanted to um, really kind of follow a similar process to what we did when we did the terminology initiative, and which was the first thing we did was we put a work group together. And I'm not going to read through all the names, but I wanted you to see the variety of people, the variety of perspectives. We've got researchers on here. We have um, center representatives on here. Uh, we have Dr. Pebbles Turboville on here. Pebbles was a, a part of this project uh, as we um, <coughs> Uh, work through the, the questions. Um, myself and Dr. Peters from the TGEC, and TGEC is um, part of uh, Colorado, Colorado State University as well. So uh, uh, Katie and I um, are the lead on this, and we are very proud to work with all of those, um, all of those people. So the first, um, the first thing when we put the work group together was to determine what equine assisted service are we trying to um, assess outcomes on? And the work group um, went through a, a, a whole process looking at the pros and cons of the different kinds of services. Did we want to look at equine assisted learning? Did we want to look at PT incorporating horses? Did we want to look at, at vaulting, driving, therapeutic riding? After looking at all the pros and cons, the work group uh, determined that the group we wanted to start with was therapeutic writing, which is also called adaptive writing by, uh, by some groups. So that, that became the focus of um, uh, the service that we wanted to focus on <coughs> to develop an assessment protocol. Um, the purpose uh, of this initiative is to focus on therapeutic adaptive writing and determine what outcomes to measure, the best measurement tools to use, as well as design a protocol that participants and providers are able to participate in and are willing to participate in. So the internal objective is to collect outcomes data, which will high already highlight uh, the <laughs> professional skill set of the certified therapeutic writing ins uh, instructor. The external um, objective is, is the idea of being able to um, gather this data in aggregate and publish that to add to credibility of therapeutic writing or adaptive writing. So th the next thing we did is we did a survey to credential professionals and uh, as well as participants because we wanted to know what outcomes did they want to measure and how much time were they willing to, to spend measuring those kinds of outcomes? What, what was realistic? Um, the, we sent that to CTRI, Certified Therapeutic Writing Instructors, Clients, Caregivers, and PATH International Leadership, as well as um, Center Volunteers. So the results of this, based on the results of the survey and the work, the uh, subject matter experts work group, the outcomes uh, chosen to be measured are self-efficacy, emotional regulation, quality of life, physical outcomes, social outcomes, and empathy. Horsemanship skills, of course, were discussed, 
but centers are already measuring horsemanship skills. We wanted to look at a protocol that measured some of the outcomes people want to be measuring, but they didn't necessarily have a way to measure. So we wanted to use standardized assessments. We did not want to create a whole new assessment tool and try to pilot that and, and figure that out. So based on what we wanted to, <coughs> excuse me, wanted to measure, the assessments chosen are um, PROMISE, Patient Reported Outcomes Measurement Information System, and NIH, National Institute of Health Toolbox. The item sets will include physical functioning mobility, social role peer relationships, global health, self-efficacy, emotional control, and em empathetic, em empathic behaviors. Participants that will be part of the um, as, uh, assessment that will be assessed are children's age five to 17, with a caregiver available to complete the questionnaire, adults 18 and over who are able to understand and answer about their own physical, social, and emotional well-being, which we recognize leaves a population out, but we didn't have a good standardized assessment for that particular population, so we're starting in this place. And then the activity will be uh, therapeutic riding or horseback riding. <clears throat> so we are um, doing a pilot program with three uh, PATH International Premier Accredited Centers. We chose the centers based on differences in size, differences in geographic location, as well as ensuring that they had a, enough uh, number of participants to um, make, make it realistic to understand whether a uh, center of that particular size could support this kind of assessment protocol. Um, we have secured IRB approval for the, um, uh, for the pilot, pilot program, and we will do, be doing that pilot program in the fall with, the, uh, with uh, the expectation that come January, February, we will be, <coughs> excuse me, we will be analyzing uh, the results. And the results we're really looking at for this pilot program is, are there changes we need to make to, uh, to the assessment protocol? Did it work? Were, were uh, instructors able and uh, participants able to complete, complete it or did they fall away because it, they were just too busy or they didn't understand or how much time did it actually take? So do, does this assessment protocol, it, will it work? Will it be a way that our centers will be able to um, assess certain outcome? We, might, we will of course look at the data of improvement, but it's only one session. And, it, and it's going to be a 10-week session, we, we're not sure how much change or improvement we will see. So our intention is for this pilot to inform and that whole, the whole protocol make any changes and see about the realisticness of rolling it out to a greater group of centers and be able to collect, uh, collect that data in the aggregate um, to show the uh, impact of therapeutic writing on self-efficacy, the, the outcomes that I already talked about that go um, over and uh, beyond uh, horseback riding um, abilities. <laughs> Um, um, thank you to Pebbles and HHRF for uh, providing this time and space for us to gather and share and learn with one another. It's, I, it's been really neat to, I guess, again, the ongoing focus on research in general and the need for it, but I've been really impressed and um, interested that it feels like the research is becoming, it's dissecting more and more of the different elements, and I think what stood out for me is how much there is to research. Like there's so much an ongoing need of it. So that's really exciting. So as far as thank you for the opportunity to share about uh, the projects I'm involved with. Um, as Pebbles mentioned, I uh, founded, co-founded Gala and was, had this wonderful journey um, building and putting credibility and awareness about a particular model and, and, and the importance of having models in this type of work specifically for mental health incorporating horses. Um, I am now involved in some two new organizations that I am um, happy to share with you guys what we're doing with that. 
The first is called Arenas for Change. <laughs> Yeah. You know what, actually this is making me hopeful about speed dating. <laughs> oh. Oh my God. Um, yeah. So with Arch, um, what we're doing with that, I, I thought it was neat just... We've been upstage. I know, I'm just, I, this is common. This is common. <laughs> so um, what we're doing with that is it's a learning community and there's a group of us that got together and said, what can we really do and focus on to keep improving our skills, like, you know, we're doing good work out there and this is amazing stuff. Is there something we can do to keep honing in and that? And, and it was kind of neat hearing the different, um, sharing about, you know, we have the impact that the horses have, we have the impact that methods, the interventions that are being chosen, treatment, learning, uh, interventions that are being chosen to use. And then we have the impact of the facilitators themselves. And I think I've heard like the energy that they're bringing, the stance that they have, how they're engaging with the clients and even the horses. Um, how is that impacting the work that's being done and, and the effectiveness of what we're doing? So uh, with ARCH, that's what we decided to focus on is really as a learning community, what can we do to look at our mindset, what we're bringing in as facilitators and how can we not only learn, but also teach uh, facilitators, new and, and experienced facilitators and what are we doing in the way we're engaging so as facilitators? So for instance, you know, how are we creating a choice-oriented environment? How am I looking at self-awareness and how I'm applying and using that self-awareness to inform what I'm choosing to do in the session? Um, how, um, and the phrase we use is, how are we supporting clients and being the authors of the so session story? Um, and that we as story editors of our clients can impact and influence, but where we're not taking over and it becoming, we're authoring the stories. Um, how can we look at how we can build and bridge and connect with um, what the clients and the horses are doing so that there is an organic flow to the process? And a lot of what we're looking at in doing this is how can we increase emotional safety in the process where clients truly feel seen and heard, which again can deepen and impact the uh, process in a more maybe effective way. So that's what we're looking and practicing and sharing. Um, we're doing a lot of what we kind of came to doing this through is the concept of story. And, um, and so we're doing a lot with story, both, as, again, it's not a model that we're talking about, it's really looking about how we're impacting the session as facilitators and are there things that we could be doing that can impact in a positive way. Um, one of the things we're also doing with Arch is just we wanted to be as accessible as possible. We're really looking at partnering with universities so that this can be a resource for their students. You can come and learn. It's a subscription. A lot of it's online um, and, and learn some of the stuff we're learning and some of this framework, which is just really asking ourselves different questions as we're facilitating sessions. Um, so that's what we're doing with Arch and just wanted to share about that in case you're interested in, in that side of, of that. The other thing that we're doing is a nonprofit organization called Horses for Mental Health. That was created specifically to advocate and bring more awareness to the power horses can have for mental health and well being. And so, our whole focus primarily was to create a, a large scale public awareness campaign. And we are really excited to um, and want to thank. Again, Zoetis, thank you Mark back there, and Zoetis for sponsoring this project because uh, this couldn't happen without those resources. And we're excited to say we are actually putting it into action and we're doing it as a collaborative industry-wide effort. So we have, um, and we're doing this, I should say, to a partnership with the Equine Network who's gonna help with that exposure. Um, we're doing a partnership with uh, HHRF, thank you guys for supporting this uh, with Path International, with, uh, thank you Kathy and Path International, we're doing it with Natural Lifemanship, thank you Laura for supporting this, the Herd Institute, um, ARCH, uh, Temple Grand and Equine Center, American Horse Council, um, and so, I hopefully didn't miss anybody there, but um, as an industry leadership, the idea is that we're going to activate our networks to participate in these annual campaigns. The campaign is going to be a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign to support the programs as well. So the idea with these peer-to-peer -peer public awareness convening campaigns is that 
by coming together, our, our voices get louder and our reach gets wider. So the first campaign is gonna be October 3rd through 10th. Um, if you're, uh, the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising part, if you're a nonprofit program who incorporates horses for mental health, so that is our more primary focus, feel free if you haven't heard about it already through all these wonderful organizations sharing about it and you wanna get involved, um, I have some cards over there where I'm sitting right there, feel free to grab one. Email me this weekend, because our deadline is Monday if you'd like to be involved with your nonprofit organization. What we're doing, Horses for Mental Health is doing, is providing all the infrastructure, all the materials, the platforms. We're training and teaching your programs how to do peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, and we're gonna do it together. Um, and we're providing videos, we're making videos, all these different materials. So even if you are not a charity partner involved this way, our goal is to provide the materials that all of your programs, everybody's interested in this, can utilize to share on your social media, share with your networks to get people excited. Our ultimate goal is that every person, when they have mental health needs or anything like that, that one of the first things they think of is, I should look for a program that incorporates horses. So that's our ultimate goal. Um, this will be annual. Next year, because of just logistics with the Equine Network, it's gonna be in May, so it'll probably start being May, which is Mental Health Aware, uh, Awareness Month. October 3rd through 10th, which we're doing at this, is Mental Illness Awareness Week and also World Mental Health Day. So the idea is to combine it with um, other media things to, again, amplify our voices. So we're really excited about this uh, potential to really take the work we do. So it's, I mean, the research is so important and so needed. And what can we do to get the word out there more effectively so people know that this research is backing what we're doing? So that's what we're doing with Horses for Mental Health. There's one other thing that we're also providing that I wanted to just share. Um, we have put together a research summary, a peer-reviewed research that focuses on the benefits of Horses for Mental Health. You can just go to horsesformentalhealth.org, resources, and download that. There's like over 40 um, ref uh, re references right now. Just again, as a way to support the work that you do, make it really accessible until Hetty puts together the wonderful repository for Skisela. <laughs> until you put together your wonderful repository. Um, in the meanwhile, for those of you who do uh, work with mental health, you can go to our horsesformentalhealth.org and download that. If there's a, a reference on there, peer-reviewed reference that is not on there that you know of, please let us know. I need to thank Nerds for Herds. Nerds, nerds for Herds. I hope you would reference. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, Nerds for Herds are the one uh, group. They're a group of um, researchers who do consultation for programs. Not just horses, they all do incorporate horses and big horse lovers, also all animals. And they're a wonderful consultation group. Um, they put this together for us and they're going to keep it up annually for us. Um, I also call them up when I say, see stuff on social media and I'm like, is this legit? Like, you know, things get passed around. Is, there, is this real valid? data that's being passed around. I contact them to, to um, you know, for grants. I have a, a potential grant coming in. Okay, I need to, you know, measure the outcome data. What's your suggestions? How do you do it? They'll hold my hand. <laughs> They'll hold all of your hands in putting together evaluation data collection type um, services. So their card is on the table right there too if you want to, if that could be of use for your programs as well. So thank you. Thank I think you. That was it. Thanks. Thank you.